Good morning. So I'm going to tell you about the cholera situation analysis in India and I'll highlight the cholera situation and also the lacuna because unless we admit the our lacuna we cannot actually address properly how to go ahead so review the um, just reviewing the epidemiological data first we admit that india has no national cholera control program but india has integrated disease surveillance program and there actually outbreaks or acute watery diarrhea reported and investigated and cholera morbidity and mortality report through cbhi and dhhs which is massively under reporting and we have um, uh, last two thousand during 2009 and 2017 so 559 outbreaks affecting the 27 states i'll explain in the next slide which 27 states we are talking about so um, uh, outbreaks has occurred and the hotspots susceptible to cholera outbreaks identified in the 16 states or union territories that is this is the green map and the clear seasonal trend in cholera outbreaks you can see over here reported but very low CFR and reported the case loads reducing over the years and no cholera specific objective at the national level as I mentioned although improved water and sanitation facilities ensured what you know during this present government through the such Bharat vision that actually uh, we hope it is um, re reducing different water related disease a lot now the cholera outbreaks during 2009 and 2017 based on the idsp data which we uh, which i mentioned that is 559 outbreaks have been identif uh, or identified and nine states which mainly in the northeastern state among the seven northeastern states, six were included in this nine state and the some three union territories where there is no report of outbreak. And the six state account 67 percent of all outbreaks. But of the six most popular states of India, so only one state was represented in this list that is the west bengal but other um, five popular state actually account for almost half of the nation's population but accounted only about 18 percent of the reported outbreaks so again so i'm highlighting um, because these are the lacuna we can um, uh, get from the idsp data and now the mapping of the cholera vulnerable districts of India, that is two approaches. One is the modeling approach by Dr. Ali et al. That is cholera cases reported from 2010 to 15 through, through the IDSP and the socioeconomic status data and the WAS coverage. So WAS indicators have since improved, that is through the such Bharat Obijan again and likely and through this actually when we called about the modeling data that sometimes overestimate also the burden of hotspot and patchy reporting like um, um, through the IDSP that also we have observed and endemic hotspots with sustained transmission not raising not raising raising the outbreak triggers may be missed through the outdoor um, idsp data 
and the multiple source of reported data that is IDSP, CBHI, DGHS and the published case of outbreak that through the literature that has also been done and we have um, got that in the next slide we will show you what we have got through this approach and the identified that um, uh, endemic district versus non-endemic district that is that which has experienced outbreaks in three in, in three times in last five years and priority district <laughs> that is out um, uh, um, greater than two outbreaks in a year reported by district in last five years and Again, it under, um, underestimates the burden of hotspot and affect due to the, as it, it has affected by patchy reporting for cholera. So there the modeling approach, they are actually showing that the um, red one is showing the endemic states and the green one is the non-endemic states over here and the um, blue circle actually based on the reported cases and the um, black circle based on the model based predicted cases. But here that is 56 priority districts have been identified. India has a 725 districts among them 20, 56 priority districts where 21 endemic dist districts have been identified and the 35 non-endemic districts experience the multiple outbreaks in that is um, um, at least once in a year. And India was data again at least basic water that is um, um, access in urban setting that is 96% and rural setting 85%. But still no access, that is the huge number. You can imagine that is 150 million. So, and at least basic sanitation, that is overall 44%. In urban setting, that is 65%. In the rural setting, 34%. And um, regarding the Shachata status report in 2016, the persons going for open def defecation that you can see in 7.5% 7, 7 in urban setting and rural setting, it is very high, 52%. And the household practicing open defecation, that is 8.9% and 50%. Uh, in urban setting and rural setting, 55.4%, and household with access to water in toilets, that is in urban setting, 87%, and rural, 42.5%. And household reporting to have a sanitary toilet, that is 80, around 89% in urban setting and 45% in rural setting and person using sanitary toilet in household communities having sanitary toilets, that is 98% in urban settings and 95% in rural setting. And on the onset, actually, why we are showing another data that is, as I am telling, that the whatever the report we are getting that is grossly underestimated because we conduct a surveillance in, in one hospital where in West Bengal, that is the infectious disease hospital. And over the year, from 1992 to 2018, you can see the diarrheal patient admitted to this hospital. And although the mortality rate has been reduced a lot, but morbidity is still more than 20,000 per year in one hospital in India, in, in West Bengal. So from there, you can imagine that the problem, how much the problem is underestimated 
whatever the uh, reports government pr produces to the different agencies. And when we did the uh, cholera surveillance in these um, uh, admitted cases over the years, so uh, that again we can tell that the, in 2008-9 it is around 24 to 20 um, uh, five percent cases of the um, admitted um, case um, uh, diarrheal disease admitted cases 25 percent are infected with the cholera vibrio cholerae but in during 2017-18 it has come down come down to 10 to 12 percent so that I don't know whether it indicates that cholera burden as per se has reduced over there. And again, as um, um, although uh, here we have talked about the hotspots and other things, so just I want to mention one thing that in Haiti outbreak and the Yemen outbreak, that in Haiti outbreak we all know that the Southeast Asia is the, um, uh, from Southeast Asia it has been originated that we have shown through diff uh, throughout um, the globe different researchers had tried to explain and we have also shown that how the Haitian out uh, different traits of the Haitian outbreak over the period of time have been accumulated in the Indian subcontinent um, uh, because it is not a one time event what we sh saw in the Haitian strains over um, retrospective analysis of the um, uh, Indian strains, we have shown that in different time frames, the different characters have been accumulated, and then it has formed a one um, uh, strain which has um, actually caused outbreak in Haiti. Sh similarly, in um, in Yemen, the difference between the Haitian strain and Yemen strains that Yemen strains also has um, um, all the Haitian traits. Along with that, it has a polymyxin B sensitivity traits. That actually, we have seen that during 2012, in the Indian subcontinent, it, has, it came intermittently, and it spread all over the country during 2015, around 2015. And 2016-17, the Yemen outbreak, 16, it has occurred over there. So somehow, from this part of the world, so Southeast, kind of Southeast Asia is the cradle of all cholera outbreaks. So we should monitor more cautiously that in the Southeast Asia, then we can um, contain the spread of different outbreaks in different parts of the world. Now the um, way forward, that is the India can tilt the scale for making the case for cho cholera control and available data modeling approach unlikely to reflect the true reality of the situation and the fragmentation of the data that is the outbreaks through IGSP <coughs> or isolated case count, all are likely to underestimate the true burden and the approaches based on the reported data likely to underestimate the magnitude. So approaches based on adjusted models likely, again, that likely to overestimate the magnitude. And case reporting for acute diarrheal diseases as a proxy indicator to identify hotspot, along with that adjustment using the non-cholera data. And so sentinental surveillance approach to get more robust estimate is required, but funds is a big issue. And the absence of national cholera control program hamstrings the coordinated public health response that approaches need to be district based to enable the policy convergence. So thank you.